Hello, good morning, everyone. We're gonna go, go ahead and get started. I'm hoping that some other folks will join us as we get started. Um, my name is Michael McDonald. I'm an associate professor in the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine at Washington State University. And I'm the co-leader of, of the Native Center for Alcohol Research and Education, or NCARES Pilot Corps. And so we're uh, excited to talk today about, um, to do a, hopefully a short presentation, then followed by a question and answer session uh, focus on our um, pilot core uh, grant call for grant applications. I'm joined um, by Gladys Rowe, who is our uh, main coordinator for this core and um, lead for NCARE. So uh, I'll be hopefully, we'll have some time at the end to answer some questions as we go. So we're going to do a short presentation first, followed by questions afterwards. And I'll answer probably most of the questions with assistance from, from Ms. Rowe. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So a little background about NCARE. Our mission is to conduct alcohol intervention research to improve public health in Native communities. And we accomplished this goal by collaborating and, engage, collaborating and engaging with re research project teams and the pilot projects to conduct research that yields high quality data while simultaneously meeting the unique needs of our partners. So to summarize that long sentence, we uh, had three research projects that were funded as part of this grant. And we also have a, pi um, a pilot core, which we're talking about today, that has the pilot core mechanism, grant mechanisms that, that we're talking about today. For a summary of the research projects, that the three large research projects that we have funded through the grant, you can visit our website um, if you Google NCARE um, and Washington State University. So here's our website. Actually, it might be easier to get through this website. Um, if you visit irich.wsu.edu NCARE call for applications, you can find a full description of our pilot, our new, um, of our pilot project grant. This is a relatively new website, and hopefully most of you um, who are interested in this call for applications have seen it and have used the information online. So that's the intention of that, um, of that website is to, is to supplement the information we're, we're um, sharing today. Additionally, we will have a recording of this um, webinar on, on that website. So the pilot core grant, the purpose of our pilot core is to foster and fund innovative, innovative research projects. Uh, and these re research projects are, are intended to be focused on reducing the burden of, Alas of uh, alcohol use disorders in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. And really the per primary purpose, and we'll talk, we'll get into some details and I'm glad to ask your questions about this, is really to support uh, junior investigators and to provide some sort of a, a pilot funding so that junior investigators can really kickstart their their research programs. Um, and, and also, that while that's our primary focus, we're also interested in potentially supporting investigators who have done work in other areas, but have not done alcohol use disorders treatment research or um, intervention research in Alaska Native and American Indian communities. So to be eligible, applicants must plan to conduct research in American Indian, Alaska Native with Alaska, American Indian and Alaska Native individuals or communities on a topic that's related to alcohol use disorders and their related health concerns. So that's the topic area. Our, but, uh, and in addition to that, while we are, we are willing to accept applications on any topic around alcohol use disorders, we're really focused, this, the larger grant, the NCARE grant, is really focused on intervention studies. The, the second piece is that you have to have a, a, do, a doctoral degree in social, social behavioral health, medicine, nursing. So basically the requirement is they have a, a relevant doctoral degree. That is to serve as a principal investigator. So to be clear, that is for principal investigators on the pilot grants applications, you need, you need to have the principal investigator or one of the principal investigators needs to hold a doctoral degree. The other thing is that we'd like to have folks um, be a postdoctoral fellow or a junior faculty member or be in a similar non-academic position. So for those of you who might be um, an epidemiologist at a tribal health center uh, or at an urban Indian health institute, we're still interested in you applying as long as you have a doctoral degree. Um, and you don't have to have a faculty member. You don't have to be a faculty member. But the emphasis here at this point is really that we're looking to support junior researchers. Along those lines, um, you can't to you to be part of to be apply for this program. Uh, the PI could not have had NIH R01 level support, or if they have had NIH R01 level support, 
they, they may be able to still apply. We'd like to talk to you um, to learn more about your situation. You may still be able to apply, for instance, if you're an associate professor, so you're not technically a junior researcher, uh, particularly those who haven't had an R01 level grant who are associate professors or, or a similar rank would still be potentially be eligible to apply. And as I mentioned earlier, those who are, have R01 level funding, um, but it's been in a different area. Um, so you might have done addiction work, but it's not been in, focused on Native communities, and you really would like to, um, to expand your work in, into Native communities, and you have a reasonable and um, an outstanding application. And you have to be up to date on human subjects training. That's our last requirement. So in terms of um, what the pilot core funding entails. Uh, so proposals may request up to $40,000 total in support. The, your proposal could be focused on one year. So if it's a scope of work that you feel like you could complete using $40,000 or less in one year, you can apply for a one, one year funding. If it's a project that's gonna take two years, you could apply for $40,000 over two years. So again, that would be $20,000 over two, $20,000 in each year over two years or $40,000 in one year. So really your budget though should fit your scope of work. What you're proposing should fit your budget in terms of the timeline and the dollar amount you've, you're um, asking for. So accepted investigators um, will be, so if, if, a, if you're funded, if you're funded through this pilot core mechanism, we will, we're, the center will provide um, training and support in terms of ethics. So that could include anything where from technical assistance on your IRB proposals. Um, or IRB amendments um, to, to, or to um, uh, ethical support and data sharing agreements with your tribal partners. Uh, we'll also provide statistics support, statistical support in terms of data an analysis and mentoring around how to conduct your own data analysis or potentially support in, in helping you conduct a data analysis um, through our research methods core. And we're also happy to provide support and data management. So the pilot, there's two levels to, um, to review. There's really three, but we'll talk about, I think, two today. The first one is going to be a, a letter of intent that we're asking individuals to, to, um, to submit. And, and really, the, the goal for this is to, to get a sense for how many applications we're going to get, what their focus, focus foci are going to be in terms of the reviewers that we might need for um, individuals we would like to, to um, we're going to invite to submit full proposals. And then also to help us sort of um, figure out or help us really determine which proposals seem to be consistent with the end care mission and would be um, invited to for full proposals. So to be clear, not everyone necessarily who um, submits a letter of intent will be invited to um, submit a full proposal. And those letter, importantly, those letters of intent are due on September 30th, um, so later this month. So, out of those letters of intent, we'll invite some individuals to, um, will be invited to submit a full application. Uh, and, we'll, and that review, again, of the letter of intent will be to ensure the project is consistent with the NCARE objectives. And, um, and any of those, any individuals who are either not funded in the first level of review or the second level of review um, will, will, be, will be encouraged, will be given feedback and encouraged to apply at subsequent um, calls for application. So this isn't the only call for application we're going to have for the grant. This is actually the second, and we're intending to have at least three. Um, and so we'll be uh, we'll be um, providing you with feedback. All applicants will be provided with some time, type of written feedback in terms of their um, letters of intent or full applications. The full application will be due on November 15th, 2018. And to be clear, because I've written a number of grants, um, and this might be the first question I would ask is, how quickly will we be able to get turnaround in terms of letting you as, a, as an applicant know if your letter of intent will be um, selected to be, um, and, and you'll be encouraged to apply for the, full, um, for the full application. So our intent is to provide that review as quickly as possible and give um, applicants at least a month to work on a full proposal. So there is a third, so, so after those um, applications are, are proposed, um, we will be then conducting a peer review in terms of you'll have, we'll have at least two reviewers review each of the full proposals, and then we'll have a, a, a administrative sort of science, or um, a, a leadership review where the, the senior investigators and leadership team on NCARE will ultimately be the ones who will make funding decisions. So 
the letter of intent um, format, most importantly, because that's the most the, the first thing that people are going to have to complete. We, you need to provide the name of the end care investigator who will serve as a liaison. So we'd like you to identify, and we're glad, Gladys and I are glad to partner with anyone who needs to identify um, an end care, potential end care investigator who you're interested in working with. Um, just as a liaison, we really want to build community and really support junior investigators, even in the application phase. So what we'd like you to identify, and we're glad to help you identify, a member of our NCARE research team. Um, and you could find that information on our NCARE website. Um, it really, who could serve as a liaison um, on your proposed project. We also are asking for a list of potential co-investigators and your community partners who will assist in the completion of the project. Um, as I mentioned, 2.2 mentions, and then point three, we really want to, would like to know who your community tribe um, in the setting of your proposed project, so we can have a sense of what, how many um, groups are involved and, and who's involved in your project. Then we're going to be asking for a 500 word abstract that includes your background and, and significance, specific games, and then your research methods and data analysis plan. So that's what we're asking for. In, um, the highlights of what we're asking for in a letter of intent. So it's relative, it's a brief document um, and, and not that much, not a ton of information. Um, and so with, that's the first phase. Those who are invited for a full proposal though, will have to submit a much more substantial application. That includes a project abstract. There, most of these um, requirements are gonna be consistent with an NIH um, application. The first piece is an abstract, second facilities pages, a budget justification, a detailed budget. I want to emphasize um, that we are going to do a very detailed budget review of all applications. And please, so please, when you propose, make your proposal, please make sure that it's, you have a strong justification for the expenses that you're, um, that you're requesting. A detailed budget as well, bio sketches for the investigators, a specific gains page of one, with a one page limit, a research strategy with a six page limit, a protection of human subjects if um, and we're assuming most of the time human subjects will be involved and again, perhaps a date, secondary data analysis of de-identified data might not have human subjects protection issues. We'd also, of course, want you to cite the work that you talk about in your background significance, so a bibliography. We would like a letter of support from your tribal partner, whether that's a tribal, um, an actual uh, tribe or, or tribal entity, or it's a, um, a, a let's say, a, an urban Indian organized healthcare organization. We'd like a letter of support to show that you have support from your tribal partners, if that's relevant. We'd also like a le letter of support from an NCARE liaison. Again, this could be brief. It doesn't have to be like you've known that person for your whole life. It could have been, we recognize that uh, you all, we wanna encourage as many applications from around the country as possible. And so um, it just could be a brief letter that says that they're willing to, to be a part of your project if funded. So those are the, the main components of the full application. To also, just to highlight, we're, we are gonna ask you all to follow the general NIH requirements in terms of, so that it's a level pl playing field in terms of using 11 point font on your main text, one in, or half inch margins, um, things like that to make sure that everyone has you know, the same amount of space and, and describes their work in a similar style. So back to budget. Um, the maximum award, as I mentioned before, is $40,000 um, per project. We're hoping that that's uh, direct costs. Um, because this is a pilot program, it's a real struggle for us to support indirect costs. If it's an absolute requirement of your organization that you do build some kind of indirect costs, um, which we know is the case, especially for many non-university-based groups, we would like to talk to you about that. Please email myself and Gladys, and we can, um, we, we'll be making decisions about whether or not that's allowable. And we'll have a pretty restrictive cap on indirect costs if, if anyone does request those. And they're only gonna be, that request is only gonna be granted for um, people who would not be able to apply otherwise. Um, the maximum PI effort is going to be limited at 15% full-time effort. So adjust that, that's for a calendar year, not just for, a, not for an academic year. So for those of you on nine month appointments, you can adjust that to a nine month appointment. In general, costs such as rent or computer purchase are discouraged. Again, because it's a pilot grant, we really hope that your institution or your entity that you works for, work for provides that, those costs. We'll also fund one trip to a scientific conference um, to disseminate results of your study. Um, and as I mentioned, we may make rare exceptions to these, to these things, but we um, are trying to make as few exceptions as possible. 
In terms of the peer review and then also the higher level administrative review, the scoring criteria for peer review are going to, and, and, for this, and for the higher level administrative review are going to, for the full applications, are going to be related to the relevance to alcohol use disorder research and implications for American Indian um, and Alaska Native health disparities, particularly, again, because this is a funded by the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. It's really, our, we want all projects to primarily be focused on alcohol use. Um, in the health consequences of alcohol use in native communities. There, we're gonna look at, similar to NIH, of course, we're gonna look at significance, innovations, qualifications of your research team, the strength of your research team, your scientific, the scientific rigor of your application, your ability to disseminate these findings and to go on to the, to the next phase in terms of to give community um, feedback back. The other thing that's not on this list, um, but should be and is part of our review criteria is the connection you have to the community in terms of your relationship. Um, so, you know, that could be foundational things like a tribal resolution supporting your um, program or a letter from the IR, tribal IRB suggests saying that your, your study is approved, all the way up to just you having worked in that community and having um, letters that support your level of trust in that community. Uh, we, that's going to be an important part of the review of the applications as well. And then finally, really, this, uh, this, this grant is a, it's a relatively small pilot grant, and really the goal is to, to grow more specially federally funded research in Native communities. So to help you develop those partnerships, to help you develop the research team, to help you develop the infrastructure, and to get the pilot data that, you, that, you, that individuals that, that are junior investigators need to be able to compete for successful, um, and especially NIH-funded um, research. All right, so the other things that are important are um, assurances that the project can be completed in one or two years with available resources. So that's, again, we really are gonna be looking, is your timeline for, for this small uh, pilot phase? So one thing I wanna really to emphasize, which I talk a lot to junior investigators about, is please propose a, a highly rigorous, an innovative, significant project that is not overly ambitious, that is reasonable to complete in two years. And so that we really want people to focus on, on that piece um, because this is intended to be a grant that helps you move to the next phase to do that big, really important work um, and moves communities to, along with you to that, to that big, important work. And so for, please make sure that your pro project is, is, really, um, is, really, is really reasonable. And, and I wanna make sure you also understand that the reviewers of your grant have worked in native communities, most of them for, a, for quite a while. And so they're gonna know, they're gonna be able to evaluate pretty well what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. Um, in terms of being able to complete with that $40,000 over just a one or two year period. You have to comply with NIH and FDA guidelines, of course, and um, we really want your projects to be compatible with priorities, goals, and interests of NCARE and, and, and NIAAA and the Native communities that we partner with. And so we, we'll, um, we, that's again, the letter of intent is primarily designed to, to sort of um, screen applications for the latter point. All right, so again, the, um, the letter of intent is due on September 30th by the end of the business day on West Coast time. But East Coast folks, don't take advantage of that. Um, so please get your applications early, especially those who are in early, especially those who are submitting through your own universities that have their own de internal deadlines. And you're gonna submit your application as a PDF um, to, this, to this specific address, which is NCARE pilot application at portal dot WSU CCER, CCER, yes, I said that right, dot org. And then invited applications will be due in a similar manner um, on November 15th, 2019. So really quick, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about our three currently funded projects. We have three funded pilot projects already. The, the three projects are focused on a variety of issues that affect Native communities in terms of alcohol use. The first one is exploring alcohol use and pregnancy among American Indian and Alaska Native women. So this is really looking at um, the uh, secondary data analysis along with some quantitative, qualitative work in communities to investigate the impact of, of, of alcohol use um, across a large population of Native women using secondary data analyses. And that's led by um, Dr. Lucy Hebert and Dr. Ekaterina Borduli um, is leading a project that's using a uh, breathalyzer monitoring and an intervention called contingency management, which is also is basically an incentive intervention for abstinence, um, focused on alcohol use in American Indian women. So this is a project focused on women who are 
are Native women um, throughout Washington State who are involved in a child protection-based intervention where they're receiving um, intensive case management intervention to prevent unwanted um, subsequent alcohol-exposed pregnancies. And so our, the idea of Dr. Bunduli is really to focus on providing incentives for women to stay abstinent um, using a smartphone breathalyzer um, and, uh, and a smartphone app. So that's one project, um, which she's doing a small pilot trial, very small pilot trial of that intervention. The last one is uh, out at South Central Foundation, and uh, Dr. Kate Lilly is leading that project, and it's really focused on intense qualitative work um, to, to really help identify how Alaska Native, um, as well as American Indian people who are living in an urban setting like Anchorage, Alaska, uh, how those individuals conceptualize recovery, especially those individuals who are new to recovery and um, have been in recovery for some time. So we really have um, can use the words of the community to describe how um, people achieve recovery and this, learn from the strengths of individuals who are in recovery. So those are the three projects we have funded now, um, and we're hoping to have many more. Uh, after this call, so a recording of this webinar, like I mentioned before, will be available at this website here listed below. So jot that down or take a screenshot if you can. Um, and uh, the next piece is just whether or not, we can leave it back on that website, uh, I think. Um, if you, uh, we're now opening it up for questions. So if you have a question, you can type it into the chat bar on the bottom of your Zoom screen. I'll read it out loud just so it's recorded into the webinar as well and then um, and then we'll answer your question. Okay, um, so a couple of questions here. The first one is, is a PhD totally necessary? What if you have two masters and a ton of experience? <laughs> That's a really good question. And um, as the child of someone who has five master's degrees, I'm, I think the answer to your question is um, that we really want people to, your, the evaluation of your application, your letter of intent, is going to be in a large part based on whether or not you and your team could then use these, this project to then go on and successfully compete for NIH funding. So I have colleagues, um, it's rare, but I have colleagues who have a social work degrees who are well-known, well-funded NIH researchers. And so I think we'd have to, I, the, so the answer, the short answer is no, that we really want someone um, to, to have, be, but, the, but, the, uh, but the context for that answer is that we want to fund and support teams that are gonna be able to compete for subsequent larger funding opportunities at NIH or a similar group. So what I would really strongly encourage you to do is to try to find another researcher that you work with or a partner you have that does have a doctoral degree and consider replying as co-principal investigators. Um, because I, your rich experience in that person's um, research expertise would make a much, potentially make a much stronger team. So I think, I'm not, I think that's, that's really the feedback um, that I wanna give to that question. I think that um, if, if that's not something that's possible, please reach out to Gladys and I, and we'll, we'll take that, we'll have to run that up the, the ladder in terms of, um, of the folks who are leading the grant, the larger grant, um, to see if that would be appropriate. Perfect, the next question we have is, you mentioned the emphasis on interventions. 
will exploratory research with quantitative slash qualitative be considered? Definitely. So that's a great question. So if you want to, if you're interested in working with a community to part to understand whether or not and or to develop a new intervention. So let's say that you would like to develop a culturally based intervention for alcohol use disorders in native communities. So certainly doing focus group work, doing adaptation work would be excellent, would be make a strong application. I, I would emphasize that the, if in terms of doing a mixed method study or a qualitative study consistent with the rising bar for qualitative research at NIH, our group, what, your reviews will be you need to propose a rigorous qualitative research and rigorous mixed method research that includes an integrative plan in terms of how you're going to integrate those data. I will also say, as you saw for Dr. Hebert's project, we don't only fund intervention research. So if you have a project that's not specifically focused on intervention, but could be tied to intervention. So let's say you want to have a better understanding of specific liver disease patterns. Um, if you have a community partner that says, look, we want to understand how to treat liver disease better. We're doing this work now, but we don't really understand all the different patterns of liver disease or comorbidities and liver alcohol-related related liver disease. Well, if, and they have a large secondary data set that you could have access to and you could um, use to provide information that will subsequently lead to better care and better intervention, then that would be an allowable project as well. Great, I have two more questions here. Uh, the next one is, will you tell us more about the letter of support from an NCARE liaison? How do we find out who are the liaisons and what are their expected roles on the project? So as I, I mentioned, um, we, you can find primarily find that information through our website. Um, and that is listed, if you go to just that, if you use this link here to go to ireach.wsu.edu backslash NCARE, um, you'll be able to find, or slash NCARE, you'll be able to find um, information about all the NCARE associated investigators. So you'll see a brief bio um, where they'll describe their work in general. Um, so you could either reach out to, to them directly and ask if they'd be willing to be involved. Um, the last call for applications, we had some confusion exactly what this meant. And so it's a great question. So in, in, in this current love, in this current iteration, that person just needs to say, yeah, you know, I'm, I'll be willing to partner with you on this. I'd be willing to give you some advice on how to find, uh, uh, you know, potentially find a partner to work with, or I'd be willing to, to, to give you some advice in terms of the measures or to provide some minimal, um, you know, some kind of in input into the intervention you're developing. So it could go, it could be anywhere from a very strong working relationship. So if you already work with that person or they're super excited about your project and they really wouldn't be more involved in depth than they could be. If they just want to be, will, if they're just willing to check in with you once or twice a year, um, just to see how things are going, and that's the level of involvement. Um, again, most of our investigators, like many of you, or most of you are very busy, and so um, that, that's it. it. And if you're struggling to find a person who's willing to participate as a liaison, or, um, or you please reach out to Gladys and I, and we'll definitely connect you with people. But their level of involvement can range anywhere from substantial to sort of, um, you know, check-ins every uh, occasionally. Excellent. So the next question that we have is, can you talk a little bit about eligibility based on being a citizen or a permanent resident of the U.S.? I'm an international scholar doing alcohol research in the U.S. with American Indian Alaska Native population. Thanks. So Gladys, would you like to answer that question? <laughs> sure, thank you. There we go. Um, so thank you for that question. I'm sorry, I'm causing this problem. Sorry, Mike keeps trying to mute himself and mutes me. Um, okay, so we've been investigating this with NIAAA, um, and it looks like um, it is possible with the caveat that uh, Dr. McDonald shared earlier in that the intent of this work is to fund, um, fund future research. And so the ability to obtain um, NIH funding based off of the, this work on the pilot project is one of the significant factors that we're looking at in the um, successful funding of the application. And so when we take that into consideration, um, uh, that might be a challenge, but we're definitely willing to look at the application and to look at the potential for longer term um, research. There is no specific um, restriction based on our 
pilot grant funding itself. I hope that answers your question. And I will follow up with you specifically in email with that as well. So I have a couple of other questions here. Um, to what degree is an existing relationship with an American Indian Alaska Native population necessary? Is it possible for establishing and or strengthening a relationship with a group uh, to be part of the project goals? So that's a great question. I think we can tr assist with some of, for folks who don't have a current partner, we can assist in connecting you to communities or partners that might be interested in your topic, but there's no guarantee. So, um, so for those of us who worked in Native communities, we know that building that trust and partnership with the Native community is really important in order to be able to do research, especially on a topic like alcohol use disorders and especially on a topic like intervention work. And so we really are, that is, if you have a long-standing relationship with or your mentor or your team in general has a long-standing relationship working with a different, a, a, a Native group or organization, then that's going to be a strength of an application. If, if a person is, is new to this work and has, has, um, has a letter of support that, um, you know, has identified a partner but they haven't worked together before, um, but is able to obtain a letter of support from that group, that's going to be in the between a strength and a, and, and there might be some, a little bit of risk there if, we, if the reviewers know that you haven't worked with that group before. Um, but it's still better than the last scenario, which would be that someone would submit an application and have no indication in the application that that group, um, or, or not have it, not name any particular partner, or not have any, um, you know, documentation that that group's willing to participate, and that would be seen as a weakness, I think. Uh, I have another question here. What are the anticipated start and end dates for projects? It's a really good question. Um, I think that that's going to vary by projects um, because we really are going to work, want projects to have, after those who have selected for funding, so the, I think, Gladys, please correct me as I say this, um, if, I'm in a, if I'm wrong, um, we're hoping to fund projects that are selected for funding um, in January. And that will, and the idea of funding, that would be the earliest possible start date. But before, in class, class, please correct me if this is inaccurate, that we are, we would like, to, before we, you receive our uh, grant award from us, we, will, we would like to have people have tribal approvals and their IRB approvals in place if they're doing human subjects research. So that's, that means that you're, you know, that could, if you have worked in a tribal community, that could mean that your start, earliest start date is January, potentially for funding, and the late, your start date could be potentially later um, based on when you're able to get those approvals. The grant is for two years, then subsequent to that, um, up to two years. You could, again, of course, could, if you're doing a secondary data analysis of a large national data set that includes a substantial amount of American Indian Alaska Native people, uh, then, then you may decide to submit a grant that's only a year in duration. Um, so so that, I hope that answers that question. Um, we have, are, is there any other questions? We've come to the end of our questions here. I don't, well, thank you all for your excellent questions and for attending the webinar. I think I'd just like to encourage anyone who's interested in applying, please apply, please submit a letter of intent. If you have any further questions or, um, or if you, are not able to attend this um, live webinar and have other questions and you're watching this as a recording, please reach out to myself and to Gladys um, to ask us questions about um, any questions you might have. We've got, already received a number of really outstanding questions um, and, and, and that's, that forced us to think some things through. Um, and so we really appreciate that um, because that's really improving the process for all applicants. So we really want to, we're excited about this um, pilot core announcement. We're excited to have um, applications and to partner with you all in terms of the application process. All right, thank you all. Have a uh, wonderful day.